Hi folks, it's Steve Frayne. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a connection from Oracle SQL Developer to an instance of Oracle Express 11G that's running locally on my system here. To make my connection, I'm going to go over to the Connections pane on the left-hand side. If the Connections pane is not visible for you, you can use the View menu and select Connections, and then it will appear. To create a new connection, I'm going to hit the green plus sign here. I can also right-click on the root of the Connections tab and say New Connection. Either will pop up this dialog here. Since I'm connecting to a local instance of Oracle Express 11G, I'm going to call this Local Oracle, but I could name it whatever I want. First time I log in, I'm going to have to use a system account. When I installed Oracle Express 11G, I specified a certain system password as part of the install process. You would enter whatever password you specified here. You can save the password if you like. I'm not going to for security reasons for this situation. And then down here in the host name section, I want to specify localhost, meaning I'm, connection, I'm connecting to the current machine that SQL Developer is running on. Port 1521 and the default SID of XE are all fine for Oracle Express 11G. I can run test, and you can see here it says status of success. So I'm going to connect to the database now. All right, I have my connection to local Oracle established, and you can see that it's active by the plus sign that has appeared over uh, the connection icon here. I can expand my tree here and see tables, views, etc. inside of my connection so that I know that it's working. But if I expand tables here, you'll notice that I can see what are basically a number of Oracle system tables and views exposed in my tree here. So I generally don't want to create new tables of my own using the system user for a variety of reasons. System being one of the inbuilt users, we'd like to keep its objects uh, clean and separate from the user-defined objects for which we're actually establishing our database. So any tables I might try to create for whatever business purposes the database is supposed to serve, I'd like those to be under the auspices of a separate user. Let's go create a different user with DBA level privileges and we can create some tables under that user in the future. We go down here to the other users tab and I'm going to say create user. I'm going to come up with whatever username I like. In this case, I'm going to call it sframe, assign a password to it. And then in the roles portion, we want to give certain privileges. I want this to be a DBA level user with very strong privileges, so I'm going to select that. And I'll say apply. So my user was created, my grant succeeded. And what I can do now is create a new connection that logs in with that user. I'll establish a new connection. I'm going to call it local oracle sframe. You could call yours whatever you like. I'm going to use the user ID I just created and the password I just created. All the host name connection information remains the same. We're still connecting to local host on port 1521 with the state of XC. That hasn't changed. Just the credentials I'm going to use to authenticate with the system and the account I'm going to go in under has changed. And I'll say test. Status is success, so I'll say connect. And there, I have a new connection to Oracle, my local instance of Oracle Express 11G under the sframe user ID. Now when I go in here and I expand tables, I see nothing in there. So when I start to create my own tables under this ID, they won't be cluttered in amongst all the other variety of system-owned tables that the system user has. All right, folks, that's it. So hope that was useful to you. And have a good one.